On August 20th, Google announced that Gemini, their AI-powered assistant, would be coming to your existing Google speakers, but we didn't have a date for when that would happen. Well, just last week, Google announced that Gemini is coming to Google Home on October 1st. I can't tell you the exact extent of the rollout because Google hasn't shared that, but this will mean your old speakers act a lot like new ones. And last week was very busy with announcements just like this from all over the smart home industry. So I gathered all the important ones together here and I'll share with you the big things you need to know. Let's give them. There were two major smart home hub launches last week. The Philips Hue Bridge Pro and the AOTech Smart Home Hub. Two. The Bridge Pro signifies a huge shift with Philips Hue. To me, they've prepared for the next five years with this hub. Now, this hub is five times faster and has 15 times the memory of the original hub. It allows 150 lights and 50 or more accessories, and it can be used with up to 500 scenes. The hub also adds a new feature called Hue Motion Aware to your app, which is a fancy marketing terms for the bulbs knowing when you're in the room and then having them automate based off of that. This is the same tech that Wiz employs, which I've shown on the channel before, but they didn't just change their hub. They've changed their lighting products. There's a whole new set of smart bulbs and a split in terms of the specifications you're gonna get. The essential lineup is kind of what you know and use today, but there's a new pricing model that I would say, as scary as it sounds, is reasonable. The more expensive lineup has some incredible specs and they release details on my personal favorite called the Omni Glow Strip Light. That looks incredible and it's gonna blend into your home. Lots of those bulbs are gonna have both Zigbee and matter over thread capability. So not only can you use your bulbs with the Philips Bridge Pro now, but you have a whole host of other options. This is on top of an expanded security and security camera system that Signify has been building out for the Philips Hue brand. They launched a new wired video doorbell with 2K footage and 24 hour free cloud storage. They also announced new security cameras, so they're starting to look like a true smart home hub. For those of you that have multiple Hue bridges in your home today, by the end of this year, there will be a migration feature that allows you to move multiple Hue bridges into a single bridge pro. AOTech has basically been the center of the SmartThings universe for the last three years. Now their hub is the one most people have, and so anytime they're gonna update their hub, it signals a big change for SmartThings. There's a lot of similarity here with the Bridge Pro. It's a faster hub, it has more memory, it has a focus on local automation and communicating locally with your smart home gear. That all means the internet isn't required it has Zigbee and it acts as a thread border router. Plus it has both Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity. Now you might be noticing that there is no Z-Wave on this new hub and that is the major change for the SmartThings system. You can use Matter products and you can use Zigbee with this new hub. The other big change is that this hub is ready for both a USB connection that won't be used initially, and we don't know what it's for, but it's also ready for QR code onboarding of new products that you bring into your home. That is a feature we've seen with Apple HomeKit and a few other apps, but it is an upcoming feature of Matter and this hub is ready for it. I think both of these new hubs are signaling a shift in the primary communication method being Zigbee and Matter. Plus, companies are packing in extra processing power and memory so they can store more on their hubs. I think they're all preparing for executing some more AI features. I guarantee every person who owns a robot vacuum wants this for their vacuum. This is called the Eufy Mars Walker and it lets your robot vacuum go up and down stairs. Now what happens is your robot vacuum boards the Mars Walker and then the walker puts out its legs and navigates the robot up your stairs. There's no complicated system to attach to the robot vacuum itself and when they get to the top of the stairs the robot vacuum is really 
release to complete its work on your next floor. Amazingly, the Mars Walker can already deal with L and U-shaped staircases as well as the basic ones. So I'm really looking forward to this one coming next year as it will finally be one robot vacuum for the whole home. Now this might feel very futuristic, but Eufy showed it with a new model called the Omni S2, and they also gave us details of a 2026 Q2 release, or at least that's what's being said today. Also, I did see a version from Dreamy very similar to this. There's less details about the launch and it feels a little less ready for prime time, just given the differences in design, but it looks to be a very similar method and now we just have to wait for more detail. We might not be thinking about our lawns for much longer as we transition into fall, but Robo Rock is ready for next year. I'm really excited for the Rock Mo Z1 because it solves some major issues I've had with robot lawnmowers this year. This new one can go up slopes up to 80% and it can go over obstacles up to six centimeters in size. To do these things, Roborock put independent motors on each of the wheels and they added a suspension system. So that means it can deal with those slopes and still make your yard look great. I can't say that about any other unit I've tested. Now I'm excited for this launch because Roborock is really known for their navigation. And I think current models of lawnmowers kind of suck. They use what's called RTK combined with their own navigation, but it hasn't been a winning model for me. So Roborock combining RTK and V-Slam for navigation and also stating that they'll be able to trim within three centimeters of walls. These things have me very excited. There aren't a lot of details out there with this mower and that's because Roborock has been very clear that the exact dates of release aren't available and the design isn't 100% finalized. So things can change a bit yet on this one. AI is pretty much the all-encompassing buzzword, <laughs> but honestly, we're still waiting for some really fantastic AI features to change the smart home. I will say though, SwitchBot is getting serious with AI and they might have that big thing coming. Today they have an AI tennis machine called AceMate, a cute little AI pet, and they even have an AI-based art frame that works with IKEA frames. But the big launch later this year will be their AI hub. Now first and foremost, it's a hub with some great specifications. It'll allow you to connect over a hundred SwitchBot devices and those connections can happen at a distance of up to 200 meters. That's a huge improvement over their previous hubs. But the really exciting feature is in the AI analysis. When paired with SwitchBot, cameras or an upcoming video doorbell, the hub can provide you interpreted events with detailed notifications. You can also search with the hub to find specific events like where did I leave my phone? These features are based on a new AI chip and local storage on the hub that you can expand up to one terabyte for all of your video. And if that wasn't enough, they're letting you push out eight 2K cameras through an HDMI port to the TV of your choice. And finally, the hub supports RTSP, so it does a ton. The one thing we have to watch with this hub is that they're talking about a subscription. I don't get that if we have everything being done locally on the hub, so I need to understand a little more there. There is nothing in my mind that has improved smart homes and automation more than the move from a traditional PIR motion sensor to the newer millimeter wave presence sensors. One of the things that we've had to deal with for a while are big long cables coming out of those because they were taking too much power. Now I can show you two presence sensors being released this year that are gonna be battery powered. The first is from SwitchBot. They have combined their previous design for this PIR motion sensor with a light sensor and a millimeter wave presence sensor. And they've given us up to 15 months of battery life on just two AAA batteries. This sensor supports Home Assistant out of the box using a Bluetooth proxy method that I've personally used a number of times. Plus it supports Amazon and Google Home 
with a SwitchBot hub. It's also using a bit of AI to adapt to fans and pets and moving air, which are common problems with presence sensors. One of the best companies at producing good presence sensors is Acara. They gave us more details on the FP300 presence sensor. This one has been talked about since CES earlier this year, but it's battery powered too, and it features both thread and Zigbee connectivity. Now it's not just a millimeter wave sensor either, as it has a PIR motion sensor, light, temperature, and humidity sensors. And even more interesting is that you're going to be able to turn on or off those sensors in order to conserve battery power. This one could be the ultimate, and the company has been running a beta testing program with this one for a bit. So I think that FP300 is gonna come out really good. There is a third option for presence detection. This one comes from Shelly, and it does look like it will require a cable. But the interesting thing with what Shelly has been doing recently is that they produce devices that have multiple different communication technologies on them. The new Gen 4 presence sensor from them is the same. It can be used with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or Zigbee, and it has a whole mapping system on it that allows it to detect up to six different people. Jelly also gave us details about a device called Blue Distance. I think this will be a very useful device for those of you who want to create an automation for how you're parking in your garage. It's meant as a liquid level measurement sensor, but it's also meant for parking and it's Bluetooth connectivity make it maybe the perfect parking sensor setup. Govi launched a trio of smart lights last week, all of which people who love smart lighting will be excited about. But the product that caught my eye is the TV Backlight 3 Pro. Previous versions of this product have struggled to get the color reproduction exactly right. First of all, they didn't have enough data to see all the different points on your screen and then replicate those colors perfectly. They couldn't produce a lot of the lower saturation colors. So what they did is they took their Lumen Blend feature, which I've shown on the channel before and in recently upgraded light strips. They've added it to the light strip that goes on your TV with the Backlight 3 Pro. And then they added a third camera so that they can provide incredible performance when it comes to detecting and displaying the right colors around your TV. This one to me will change everything when it comes to TV backlighting. Govi is also launching a new outdoor pro level permanent light. They call that one the Prism. There are a lot of neat upgrades there, but their other launch has me more excited. The new Curtain Lights Pro look unbelievable. It's so much better than the previous models, and at this point, I can call it a low-resolution television screen. That's because it refreshes 30 times a second, and with almost a thousand light beads on it, it can actually display some really neat things. I did a full walkthrough of what's possible with that new Curtain Pro light. That is up on screen for you to click on and go watch now right there. That's a brand new product with some incredible features. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching today, and of course, live smart.